Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. We're gonna do a video for you on plain trusses today. It's gonna to be a pretty simple, quick video. I'm gonna go over um, how we uh, arrive at these equations for um, statically unstable, determinate, or indeterminate plane frame trusses. And then we're gonna solve a few example problems, okay? And just a, just a little note, guys, if you're enjoying the channel, you know, hit that subscribe button down below. It's much appreciated. Hit the like button, and uh, just leave a comment down below because we love to chat with you guys. And thank you all for your support thus far. Okay, cool, so let's take a look at this. Now, um, this video specifically is not on internal stability, so um, we're not checking to see if the trusses have enough members in order to be stable. We're checking kind of its external stability. So if the number of unknowns that we need to solve for is equal, less than, or greater than the number of uh, equilibrium equations that we can generate. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at um, just a little bit of an explanation here. So if we take a look at the first one, statically unstable, so we have M, okay? which is the number of members in the truss. We have R, okay? R is the number of reactions. And you'll see that these are on the left side of the equation, okay? And on the right side of the equation, we have 2J, okay? Where J is the number of joints in the truss. So what does this equation mean? Well, it it's actually really helps to kind of understand what this means instead of just plugging it in. Because if your teacher does throw you a trick, you'll know how to deal with it. So essentially, on the left side of the equation, we have our unknowns, okay? So we have our unknowns. So what are we trying to solve for when we solve for a truss? So say we have a truss here, okay? So when we take a member out, let's take this member out here, okay? We have some force that we're trying to solve for. Maybe this member is in tension, maybe it's in compression, okay? But we have some axial force here that we're trying to find in order to solve for the truss. What else are we looking for? Well, we're looking for the reactions. So as you know, a pin support has two forces and a roller has one, okay? So these are our unknowns. We have all the, the forces from the reactions. We don't have moments in a, in a pin truss system like we have here. And we have an axial force in each member, okay? So those are on the left side of the equation. What's on the right? On the right is J. So for each joint in a truss, so if we have a, if we have a truss here, okay? Uh, at each joint, we're going to have, for example, two forces here, let's call this Fy and Fx. And these are going to be equal here because, okay, so Fx is gonna be equal to Fx and Fy is gonna be equal to Fy for each joint, okay? Because um, at joint, the reactions need to be equal and opposite. So at each individual joint, okay, this Fy is the same, this Fx is the same. So at each joint, okay, we can say that the sum of the forces in X are equal to zero and the sum of the forces in Y are equal to zero, okay? And what that does is that gives us two equilibrium equations uh, that we can use to determine our unknowns. But we need as many equations as we have unknowns in order to get, arrive at a solution for this truss. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at these. They're actually quite easy. We're gonna go through them pretty quick. Let's take a look at the first one. So the number of joints, okay? So we have, let's count the joints. So joints count as uh, supports as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's essentially where any truss is pinned to a mem uh, another member, or any member is pinned to another member. That's a joint also at where any joint reaches the support. So um, we have J is equal to seven. How many members do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is two, right? This is a non-continuous member here. So that we count that as two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So M is equal to 10. How many reactions do we have? Well, we have a pin here and a roller, so our R is equal to three. And if we go ahead and plug this in, so let's fill out the left side of the formula first. So we have 10 plus R, which is three. And on the right side, we have 2J, so that's 14. So we have 13 and 14. Since the right side of the equation is greater than the left side, okay, we take a look up here and we see that this is unstable. Also, what you'll note here actually is if you were to, this is a little bit of a trick that might come up, is they may try and um, mess around with kind of the configuration of the truss. And by looking at it, you need to know that this is a roller here and there's only a single joint supporting it. So for example, if I were to apply a load like this, you'd see that this is, there's nothing resisting this lateral force here. So the truss would simply just slide this way. So that's a little bit of a trick. So even if this were to be statically determinant, it would still be an unstable configuration. So you need to kind of take a look at that during the test, make sure, ask your professor if he's gonna throw tricks or she's gonna throw tricks on the test like that. 
Let's take a look at the next one. So let's start with M. Okay, so how many members do we have here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So M is equal to 17. What's our R? Our R is a pin and a, ro a roller. That's 3. What about J? How many joints do we have? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 joints. And let's go ahead and fill out the left side. We have 17 plus 3 equals 2J. These are equal, so we have a, what we call a statically determinate truss. So, okay, so we have a statically determinate truss, M plus R equals 2J. So the number of equilibrium equations we can generate from this truss is equal to the under, uh, number of unknowns, so we can arrive at a single solution. So um, one thing to note about this one as well is we have three reactions here, and the reactions aren't all parallel. That's also important, right? So for example, if we had a truss like this, and it was on two rollers like this, okay? Obviously, this is an unstable truss because if we have a force this way, the truss is just going to move in this direction. So that's one condition as well for stability that you're going to need to take a look at. So let's go on to the third question here. So let's count the number of uh, members first. So let's start with M. Okay, and this is a little bit of a trick question, but um, let's let's check the uh, let's check the stability first, and then we'll go over it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, our R is 3, and our J is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 13 plus 3 and 2, 8. Okay, so that's 16, and 16 is less than, is equal to 16. Okay, so this truss uh, is determinate according to this clause, but if we take a look, okay, we have we have two rigid portions, A, B, C, D, and so this, if we call this uh, A, B, C, D here, I'll just draw this in yellow. So we have A, B, C, D, okay, and we have E, H, G, F. So E, H, G, F here. So these two rigid portions of the truss are supported by three parallel members only, okay? So if you'll notice, there's three parallel members holding up these two rigid sections here, okay? So in any kind of vertical uh, force that will cause a displacement in the vertical direction. Okay, these three parallel members are not going to be able to resist that. If it, it kind of, uh, if you think of, for example, if we had some supporting members, perhaps like like this, some cross bracing or something, or some vertical members trying uh, to to resist that motion. But because these are all parallel, this truss is simply going to collapse downwards and won't be able to resist the vertical motion there. So another kind of uh, trick. So this is actually and unstable due to the configuration. So uh, just something that you're gonna have to practice, you're gonna have to look at it, look for parallel members that are supporting um, rigid members like this, um, and also look for tricks like this here where the truss can simply just move to the right. Let's take a look at the last one, okay? Okay, so we have 24 is greater than 20, so we have an indeterminate truss to the fourth degree. Okay, so I hope that helped. Um, I, I, I hope the explanation helped for kind of taking a look at these kind of trusses here. It, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, read your textbook, I, I'd suggest, on kind of the, the special conditions that can arrive, you, you can arrive at when you, uh, you have trusses like this and this for instability. And um, yeah, other than that, it's just kind of adding up members, knowing what members and joints are, and putting them into the equation and not making silly mistakes. If you like this video, guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm Fred from Math and Engineering, and thanks for watching.